These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. That's why you've been married, what, three, four times? Four times you're taking care. Of. Lucky thing you're rich because he's yeah. taking care of all three different families, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But, dog, you're a clown. Like, stop that. Yo, what's up, Square Poopy Gate? On this episode, it's just the family. We're doing Listen to Mail. We talk a little about Zion Williams and his trick, him tricking for Mariah Mills. Uh, we talk about OnlyFans scratching. And we do some questions uh, from the from the Patreon people. So um, don't forget to follow us on uh, Patreon, Manschool202. Man uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Don't forget to make sure you follow the YouTube and everything yeah. else. Consultation with Harry. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. Y'all can check Dante Nero dot com. Uh, yeah, if you join us for me, if you join us over on Patreon, that's where we're doing another listener mail and we're doing bonus content. And over there, if you want to join us uh, to help support the show, we're talking about cold approaches, why failing is OK, uh, how to tell a girl you're broke and how to deal with apologies after making a mistake. A lot of good stuff over at Patreon dot com slash man school 202. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, yo. What up, Square Pippi Gay? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I'm going to shout out the Patre the new Patreon followers right now, right up front. Uh, I want to shout out my man, the Rational Race Theory, Dallas Fisher. Major Dahawal and Giasa Greer, Devin, Devin Hudson. Thank y'all for supporting us, man. It means everything to us. It's the only way that we keep this thing moving. So we appreciate that. What's going on, Harry? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing great, Dante. Trying to live my best life, but still having a tough time keeping these alligators down. You know. You know how it is, man. Yeah, you know what I've it heard, is. I've the heard, hustle I've never heard. stops. It never, it never stops. stops. There's no off switch on being a man. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and then they want more. Yeah. You know um. Happy Pride Week month. Month. I don't want to make that mistake, but Happy Pride, people. Whatever. I. You know. I got. I got advice for you too. All people mm. are people, baby. So don't. Don't make no mistakes about it, ladies, too. I got advice for you, too. Um, what you wanted, uh, this is just the family today. No guests. Um, we got a couple of uh, listener mail questions and stuff like that. So let's let's get it. Yeah. You had something well, that was yeah, on you your mind. You know what? It's though. interesting. We're talking. I was, I was talking about being, you know, 24-7. It doesn't stop. This is a conversation. I don't know about you. I think you've had this same conversation with people. But I will always have this conversation when no women are around especially if I meet an old friend or whatever, I ask them how they're doing. They're in a relationship and I ask them how it's going. And it doesn't matter the type of man. And these are all like good dudes. They're all feminist dudes. They're all like guys who believe in women's rights. This is not like red pill nonsense. No caveman mm. BS. We look around. There's no women around. They always tell you in secret. This is like a secret conversation. They go, man, I just feel like you know, there's certain things that we're supposed to be modern about, but it's not all modern. Like, it's a double standard. Like, we're supposed to be modern and respect women, but there's still things that women in, in relationships want that they want at old school. And right. this is, and I, I don't know about you. You tell me, do you have this conversation? Because I feel like I have it a lot in private when no one's around, people looking around when there's no women, like, because this is something that they will not say publicly because it's looked down upon. As if somehow you're a misogynist by mentioning that, that women in relationships want certain things to be old school still and that there's a double standard and that you're expected to live up to that. And that's hard as a man. Well, um, I, I mean, it's weird because I've never had that conversation about old school, you know, being wanting to be old school, but not. And then, you know, whatever. I've never really I don't have that conversation, but I think. I think I don't have that conversation with guys because I think most guys just kind of eat it. Like they understand that it's a double standard. They understand that what they're expecting. Uh, listen, um, 
guys tend to be a little more pragmatic when it comes to problem solving. It's like you hear this over and over again where a woman will say, you know, I just want to talk to you and tell you what happened. I don't want you to solve it. I don't want you to come up with a solution. I just want you to listen, right? And See, uh, I would be down for that if that's how it played out. I think it never, if you get that level of honesty, I'd be fine with that. But they want that, and sometimes they don't mention that. But that's a side note. But but I mean, well, yeah, I, I think that I think the times when you're supposed to solve it, the times which you're not supposed to solve it, it's all random and arbitrary. And I think that um, the weird thing is that you you as a man, you're supposed to you're supposed to know like and even if and, 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 and I get that even when they don't know. Right. Even when they don't know, you're supposed to know. And if you don't know, there's something wrong with you. If you if you if they have to tell you, then they shouldn't have to tell you. And and so I, and I think this is just because of the fact that, um, you know, I've said this before. The terminology is a be a man of your word. Right. And don't get me wrong. I, I understand that there are a lot of men who are not of men of their word. I understand that there's plenty of men that lie or are liars and they lie for different reasons. Some lie for malicious reasons. But a lot of people, you know, I've been talking about this a lot, is that people, most guy, 98% of the people that I know are liars. And I don't mean that necessarily in a, I, I shouldn't say not in a negative way because it is in a negative way. But but um, I I don't think it's, that they understand that even when you lie for for to not hurt somebody's feelings or to not come be in a confront a confrontational situation those are still lies and all those things eat away at your credibility and your value and your confidence and everything else i mean you're better off telling the truth having the argument and then and then having you know and, and being able to settle it so I, I just think in a lot of cases, men don't really talk about this because they already understand. Look, they a man is because he tends to be a little more pr pragmatic, and I'm not, I don't mean to go all men, but it, it's it's here's the problem. How can I solve the problem? You know, here's the problem. What can I do to solve the problem? And so a lot of times they're not taking the time to go, hey. Um, what's the dynamic of this? Or how does this make me feel? They just want to want to solve it. So, I mean, I don't know if you've been why have you been coming across a lot of guys who are talking about it? And it's not a lot, but I find that it happens periodically. Like I find that it happens periodically, and it's interesting because it's always amongst a group of people or or guys that um. You know, it used to happen a lot in the alternative comedy rooms when I was in that circle or the improv scene where you'd be talking to guys and they'd confess to you because they know that I do the podcast and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they'll feel maybe comfortable talking to me about it. Right, right. But they'll confess in a way that you're, you know, they look around and make sure no one's looking and, and say like, man, it just seems like it seems like there's a double standard. Like you're still expect you're supposed to be equal. And yet, as a man, you still have the responsibilities and obligations of being a man, right. you know, whether it's paying for the day, whether it's, you know, the social responsibility of being a man like they, they, they always express that idea to me in a way like, well, I can't say this out loud, but privately off the record. I just want you to know that uh, I think it's a little bit bullshitty that I'm expected to I'm expected to pay the be, bill, work, yeah. provide, make more money than you do this, but do be that 50 50. And then we're supposed to be 50 50 in decisions. Well, I, I think, um, first of all, the guys who you're talking about, you know, the alt scene and the and the and the, the improv scene, these guys who are supposed to be hyper feminists or whatever. They're just they're lying. <laughs> you know, I mean, the bottom line is they're lying if they're having these feelings. Right. The reason why we don't have this conversation, the reason why this is a problem is because nobody's speaking up. Nobody's saying, you know, you, you, if you want equality, this is what equality looks like. And if you don't want equality, uh, this is also what there's, there's a benefit to this. 
So it's like I've heard this a lot of times when you talk about, you know, equality. And then if a war breaks out, then women are going to get drafted. Are they going to draft women the same way they draft men? You know, um, Doubt it. if you, you yeah. know, I, I, you know, I worked in the phone company fucking 30 years. Um, I can count. Let me see. Two, maybe three. No, maybe five women in the in in my 30 years were really climbed down in the manholes and was racking and cracking and doing what their men were doing. I even had a couple of them with, that kind of led the job, but they were, you know, really, you know, like they was all about that. But it was a difficult job. It was pulling 400-pound manhole covers and climbing down into places and climbing under crawl spaces. And the majority of the women, I, and I would literally, I, if I had to say, 98% of the women didn't want, they didn't want to the smoke. They, didn't, they weren't willing to do the job the way the job was supposed to be done because it was very physical and dirty and, and so on. So, so I, you know... But I also had saw no shortage of guys willing to put them on a pedestal and do the work for them. I knew a girl who was sleeping with one of the dudes and I worked with her on a weekend and we had to pull manholes and pull cable and stuff. And one of the guys from the job showed up on his day off. He wasn't even working to, to pull her weight on the job oh jesus man what is that about just but no I mean, money. I know what it's about but yeah just came in because because she was fucking him in the truck every once in a while and so on a sunday this chick was making you know double time 160 170 dollars an hour and he was there doing the work while she was sitting in the in the, in the truck eating sushi you know so and i would be like yo what are you doing here so I mean I've seen that kind of that kind of that kind of simp shit go on and the reality is something that I realize and this is not uh gender specific but human beings take advantage of people that they allow whoever allows you to take advantage of them more over than not people will take advantage even if it's not their nature to take advantage and so there's a situation where you you know, like I talked about this before. I keep watching these these videos on TikTok where the guy tries to talk to the girl and she says, I'm, you ain't my type, you ugly, you this. And then he gets in a Lamborghini and then she comes running up, knocking on the, this your car? Oh, I ain't know you had it like that. And then the guy has a conversation with her afterwards when he should so get the fuck away from my car before I run you over. You know, I mean... That is how you teach people a lesson is when there's consequences to what to, to what they're doing, you know? So, yeah, I get it. But it's also guys who probably don't stand up for themselves in any other situation, too. Mm, yeah. Well, it's a, definitely a societal thing, too, in, in the sense of uh, what's deemed appropriate and, and what the smoke you're going to get for saying things, because nobody wants to deal with the consequences of it. Nobody yeah. wants to kind of push back on. And again, uh, as a podcast, we're very supportive of women. We're, you know, we're supportive of feminism. There's a reason it it exists, and there's a reason it needs to exist. Yeah, because you know, for for centuries, guys, those were dudes just, was going buck wow. Yeah, just, just abusive in a way. But you can't. You also can't say that it's not meant that men that built this infrastructure. Sure, they, or that there's, know, or that there's double standards now. You know, I read a story that there was a guy who uh, changed his gender on the documents, on the legal documents, on his license, just so he could get custody of his kids. Because statistically, it was easier to get custody of your kids if you if you're are, a woman. if you're a woman. It, at least yeah. in this country, it is. It just is. Yeah. Just based on that, you have to. It's almost like as a woman, you have to lose the kids. You got to do something yeah. to lose custody of the kids. Yeah. And, and it's also what... it's also a situation where we understand now that men make better parents than women do. So, I mean, and that's statistically proven. So, like, if you got a single parent and he's with the woman, the, 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 the child's with the woman, they have more of a 
chance of being delinquent, going to jail, not finishing school, all these things. Then, then as opposed to when the per when the child is with both parents, and but the the, the statistics for children that stay with the father have the same statistical uh, opportunity as somebody that has both parents. So. Where did you do you, you remember know, where you saw that study or do you remember? I, where I'm it was? quite sure I can Google it. Uh I'm looking I'm trying to look it up so we have uh yeah. Yeah. Uh okay, if we're both looking it up here. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a it's kind of a thing where um if you're looking, I'll keep talking. Yeah, you, know? you keep talking, I'll look it up. So um yeah, it was a, it's a few studies where that was the case. Um but what happens, I think, moreover, though, is because there's a as a man, there is no you, you don't think you don't think there's a bailout. There's no bailout. Like, you know, you're on your own. You know that nobody's going to lift you up. You know that no woman is going to come with money and a, and prestige and and they're going to rescue you from your own poverty or from your. Or, or, or from your misgivings, you know? Um, in fact, most guys who are fairly successful are successful so that they can get access to beautiful women, to beautiful, young, and attractive women. Because without that, you don't get access. You either got to be a great liar or you got to have enough resources that attract somebody that that that, you know, is willing to let you gain your mort your immortality in their wound, you know? Um, and as long as that's the case, there's a, you know, like, w w I mean, we're just socialized different. I talk about this all the time, you know, culture, you know, they say na uh, nature versus nurture, but it's really like there's a programming of the fact that if you are considered a man who doesn't keep his word, there is a stigma to that. And if you're a woman who don't keep your word, then you're fickle. Can't find the specific study. I'm still looking here, Dante, but yeah. let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll try to, if we can post it somewhere yeah. when I find it while we're not doing the podcast, it's hard to do both at the same time. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, there, yeah, there is a stigma to it. There's an expectation. Yeah. Uh, there's double standards that you have to deal with, which seem, you know, unfair. And listen, there's double standards on both ends. Sure. But I, and I almost don't call it double standards. There's, there's pluses and negatives to all of it. That's why, you know, there's pluses and negatives to being a man. There's pluses and negatives to pluses and minuses to uh, being a woman, you know, but it's just weird that we never acknowledge that, you know, there's, it's just different. But there's a, this, the problem is that we're trying to find this, this balance of what the distinction is. What is that? That the, the sexual spectrum is fluid and because of that, it's like, well, we should do this. I, I just think that you have to have a I think that maybe we should take this as individuals. If we're going to say that the spectrum is fluid, right, that each situation is distinctly different. Right. I think that works in 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 everybody's favor uh, when you're talking about honesty, like. But you got to be honest about it. You got to go, look, I'm not going to work uh, everything, pay the bills, do this, do that. And I'm not getting my dick sucked. Like, or I'm in a marriage. You want a marriage? What's amazing to me is that I hear this over and over again. Sexless marriages. I mean, it's something like 70% of sexless marriages. You want to marry, you want to, you want to ring, you want to get married. What you're saying is, I want this guy's monogamy, and then that means it becomes your burden to fuck him when he wants to get fucked. Like it's his job to pay the bills, it's his job to stand up. It's and even and so women will go, Well, what about me? What about me? And I, I would say to that, if you don't want to be exclusive to somebody, if you if you're trying to create monogamy with somebody, don't marry them if you don't gonna want to fuck them. It, yeah. it, you're yeah. you're taking on that on ex a fair expectation. It's unfair. It's unfair. But guys do it all the time, and they end up end up in a situation. It was one of the things that you know. I mean, I learned from my last situation. It's just like 
just because somebody is a good mother doesn't make her a good wife. You got to, there's two separate jobs you got to interview for. And just because somebody makes a good, a good boyfriend or a good husband doesn't make them a good, a good, good, good dad. father. Yeah. So you, you know, if we're looking for this, we got to We got to hold each other to these standards. But it's standards. interesting because we don't do that same thing, you know, because it comes into the workplace, too. Just because somebody's a good employee doesn't make them a good manager. Just because right. they're good at sales doesn't mean they're a good leader. Right. And yet we separate that when it comes to relationships. Right. Right. It's all of a sudden. And then you don't separate it on the woman's side. She wants to marry. Uh, how long you been with her? How long? Well, what? Who? You know, I, I get this all the time. The guys like, oh. You know, you how long you how you know guy comic will say how long you guys been together and then they'll go oh five years you ever heard of shit or oh, get off the pot yeah no look people stop maybe she doesn't deserve that maybe she does but if she does she keeps to move on this is an interesting thing every time I do a consultation I come off across somebody who says to me oh you know they'll be telling me a story. But they'll be telling me the story, the conversation that they had. And then I find out that this conversation is a text message conversation. She said this, and I said that, and then she said this, and I said that. And they want me to decipher this. And the first question I'm uh, I'm asking, why are you texting? Well, you know, these girls, women now, nobody likes to talk. They want, they want to text. Well, here's the thing. What do you want? Yeah. What do you, you want to do? You prefer Just... texting to talking? Well, yeah. Okay. If you prefer texting to talking, that's one thing. But if you're telling me that you text back and forth, first of all, I mean, what we're talking about is we're not, you, you, you there's a way in which creates uh, interest and entertainment and validation online where women can engage you online or through social media or through Twitter or through Instagram or third straps where they get this validation from whatever they for whatever they're posting because every guy is boosting them up and then they get this false sense of of security as if all men want to marry me everybody wants to marry me all rich guys no they don't they're lying to you the thing is that guys, it, it, here's the thing. If I get a text message and it's some hot girl and she's high, I'm like, bitch, what's the scam? Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Because women don't really put up, they don't want to deal with that level of rejection anyway. So what makes this a situation? So and, and I and then you you're talking back and forth, and then you so the first thing I do is I get it off of uh off a of text message. I get it out of the app. I get it off of social media. Yo, you're going to have to speak to me. Um, I'm not making a date with somebody before I haven't spoke to them directly. Uh, because if I speak to you, I can know right away if this is going to work out. This way I get to wait. I don't get to, I don't have to waste my time. And I, you and I go back and forth for this all the time. I say, I don't tell somebody, Hey, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. The bottom line is I don't know you. I don't care about your time, just like you don't care about my time. What we're trying to do is find out whether we care about each other's time. So if if you don't fit the the you're trying to put this square peg in a round hole already, we are already fucked up. You know, so I, I get what guys are saying about this double standard but of course it's a double standard but the double standard is always going to be the case anytime you're in a relationship with somebody you're going to go places you don't want to go you're going to do things you don't want to do you're going to spend money you don't want to spend you're going to have to listen to the things that you don't want to listen to you're going to have to be around people that you don't want to be i don't have a problem with making those compromises but at the very least, you should get what you want out of this relationship. And if nothing you're getting out of this relationship is nothing, then what are you doing? You're hmm. spending all this time and energy to be validated by somebody who doesn't even matter. It's insane. Well, you know, and it's weird because guys make these mistakes, even like guys that you think have made it still make these mistakes. Oh, yeah. Like I know we, we, the, the big story the last couple of weeks was zion williams 
Oh yeah, of yeah. the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, right? Um, yeah, yeah. They're still the Pelicans, right? They're not the Horn, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a guy who is the number one pick. He's a big NBA star, just signed a massive contract, and now all of a sudden, you know, he announces that he and his girl are pregnant, and then another side chick pops up, a porn star side chick. It pops up going. Was hey, it Brianna Mills? Brianna Mills. Let me I see what the names are here, so I yeah. get them right. It's important we get the accuracy of these adult film stars. Yeah, right, Dante. It's very important. Uh, Zion Williams, uh, Cox, Williamson, Cox, sorry. Susan, and did Cox. I say Williams or Williamson? It's Williamson. Oh, Williamson. Is yeah, it? Zion Williamson's. Uh, yeah. Mariah Mills. Yeah, Mariah Mills. Yeah. Yeah. And she is back at it again. I mean, still just posting more stuff on Twitter because up until like the week of, I think that he announced the pregnancy, he's trying to move her to New Orleans to be closer. Well, here's the interesting about that. If you look at those texts, the text, even the text with her was transactional. He was like he he said, you know, I would like it to be if it wasn't just about money. It was a, so he was tricking on this chick. So she was tricking. She was, you know, she was getting money from him, right, to come and sleep with her. And you know, supposedly he liked her. First of all, let's start with the beginning. Most of the basketball players ain't got no game. When they were, when other people was in the streets learning game, they were doing their two and three practices a night. So what happens is these kids now they go right from high school into the pros. They're worth millions of dollars. They get million dollar contracts. And then and they they don't have no game. And then you got this shark, Mariah Mills, who's who's sucking dick out of out of every hole, you know, and then she's she's a one. Now all of a sudden she's mad because he's treating her like uh like somebody who's trash. Which I mean, I'm not saying if you're a sex act, if you're a sex worker. It makes you trash, but I'm saying I get to have a standard too. If I don't want somebody with 80 dicks in her, I could not have that. Just like you don't have to have a guy who's five foot two. You don't have to have a guy who only makes $27,000 a year. We both get our, our, our priorities. A woman will dump you for anything. A woman will yeah. dump you if you're chewing your nails. They don't care. <laughs> like they have their standards and that's fine. You know, but it's like it's absurd to say that I don't want to fuck a woman who who sucks dicks for a living. There's nothing wrong with that. That's your choice as a human. <laughs> nothing wrong with, I don't want nothing, nothing wrong with your only fans, but maybe it's not for me. That's it. It's, it's he literally had a situation where there was there was conversations with her about him asking if it could not be as transactional, financially mm -hmm. transactional. Or her to so, like actually be his girlfriend, sort of thing. Yeah, so he was paying her, and so all of a sudden he went someplace else. She, he lied and said she loved him. She probably said the same thing. Yeah, I love you too, and give me your money. As she was counting money, bitch, you got took. Stop. He got away, and and to be honest, we don't even know he, if he got away because I think he didn't. He marry another stripper. Yeah, the woman he's having a baby with, I believe, is a stripper. The the woman he's actually impregnating. So it's not even like that. That's also still the same thing. That's still the same deal because it was very cryptic in his message when he did the uh, the baby thing. He goes, I don't know yeah. what the future holds, but just know that you're loved to his, like, to his baby, yeah, to yeah. the future baby, which is not a yeah. it's just very odd wording. It's like he knows. But I mean, this is a guy who just be, because he's had his life has been basketball. His life right. has been it's not been finances, it's not been another job. It's just been basketball. So he's right. never had to develop any sort of game or any sense, or of, any other sense of even seeing when somebody's taking advantage of you. Yeah, and it doesn't. It doesn't have. I mean, dude, he, this guy could get any chick he wants, any woman he mm. wants, and yet he's still, I mean, simping for for lack of a better term. Yeah, just just for, uh, one's a stripper, one's an adult film star, and they're both yeah. taking advantage and making him look like an ass. Yeah. And it's because he doesn't have any game. He's, he has no skills. There was nobody to guide him in that because everybody's teaching him basketball. But there's there's no he doesn't have any game. Yeah. And this is how you get got. And so now he's in a situation where he's got one girl pregnant. Like why? First of all, why you're doing all this to begin with? I don't know. Right. Why you're why you're raw dogging? And I mean, yeah, you're why you're just splashing off, shooting up the club? Why, why, what are you doing that for? 
when you've just signed a, you know, I mean, that's just just flushing money down the toilet, your future mm-hmm. down the toilet. Now you're going to have a kid with a woman who I, I don't listen. I'm not going to judge the woman just because she's a stripper, but the odds aren't great. The odds aren't the, yeah. the statistical odds that this is going to be a great situation when you've yeah. knocked up a stripper and then the the side chick is an adult film star. It doesn't bode really greatly for the kid. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. The whole yeah. situation yeah. is a mess. It doesn't bode for a, a wonderful family life. And then the, here he is out there making Instagram videos, doing gender reveals, trying to act like this is like. Yeah, like, like it's all like it's not this chick that you got a lap dance from. Right. And, I, you know, I'm not I'm not knocking to hustle. People got to do what they got to do. But, you know, let's be honest, man. Uh, what do you what do you I mean? Like, it's you got got Mariah Mills. You got got. And, and let's be honest. You didn't even get got. You made Cheddar fucking with this kid. What you wanted was more. But, you see, know, I'm not even angry at Mariah Mills because I think now what she's doing is just she's just like turning this negative into publicity, which good for her, whatever. Like mm-hmm. if that's what she wants to do, I guess, because, he, you know, he lied to her, whatever. She says he lied to her, which I do believe she he sounds like a lie. Yeah. And she thing. lied to him, too. So stop. Yeah. Stop. But stop. She's, she's getting her publicity out of it. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And he looks like a clown. And he and he honestly, he don't even look like a clown because he's a baby. He's a kid. Here's something. I want to read this real quick. Sure. Uh, in the beginning, your revenue on OnlyFans may not be impressive. While the average earnings of female models on OnlyFans are about $151 a month. But initially, you might not be taken, be, not be able to earn that much. Why? It's because beginner models won't be able to bring you an average of 21 subscribers with a subscriptions fee of $7.20. It's not easy. So here's the thing. Now, the, the whole OnlyFans thing where she's making tens of thousands of dollars is done. It's all fell apart now. What do you mean? What's going on? I, I don't fully understand what you just read. So What's the context of it? So the context is the average the average. The average OnlyFans chick, right, who's doing sexually explicit content is making $151 a month. Now, that's what she's making. So if you got on the front end of it and you were like Black China who made $21 $21 million in 2021 and all of this stuff, and you already had this fame, you had the social media problem it's man it's literally a situation where this only fans thing has fell off just like everything else you everything on the run up everybody's making millions of dollars you know it's like buying apple stock so now you got girls who are making 100 and 800 the majority the majority and average people of on women who are doing explicit content on only fans are making 150 dollars a month 150 bucks a month and uh, and now the, the difference is you can make more money at McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is paying twenty two dollars an hour. The difference is that your pussy's not all over the fucking Internet. And there are a lot of men who, whether you like it or not, feminist, I don't have to have somebody whose pussy's all over the fucking Internet. I just don't it's, have it's to. It's not ideal. It's not on our wish list. Let's just put it that way. It's you definitely at, at no point is it something you want on your wish list. Like even guys who'll take a, a check this on OnlyFans. Yeah, you know, it, if he, let me, it, what is he doing? He's like, oh, I'm going to take you away from this. Let me give you money so you could take you away from this. You don't have to do this anymore. This is, I mean, how many times have that been heard in the strip club? Everything. But what's funny is now that because nothing is easy. Nothing, anything worth something is worth a just sacrifice. If you want to, if you, if you, fast money is always just that. It's fast money and it runs out just like everything else. But it's like the, 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 you know, you had all these women who were making on the run up for this, were making millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars on OnlyFans. And then they were breaking up with guys with regular jobs because of the fact that they weren't good enough. So now it's crashing. Is that what you're saying, Dante? This yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. did this come from? See, now I want to see when did this happen and why is it happening? Well, is the like, interesting part. It's just like any other business. 
you know, oversaturation. You think? Oversaturation. Yeah. It's it's like the the. I remember when I used to watch S Instagram and any fat ass on Instagram, I would watch and get likes. Likes. I don't even like pictures anymore. Like I, I, you know, you gotta be, you gotta have an extraordinary booty to give me to get a. It's just that, it's just like everything else. Everything else transitions, and just like this, I don't need men. Fuck men. We don't need men. All of that is to me. It's all just hype. Because what happens is these same the man. I, I, I tell this to people. I spoke about this before, and you know this, Harry. My sister, my middle sister just passed away, had no relationship with her, right? No. Tried to have a relationship with her. She was just so abusive. But she was one of them party girls, always got trips, always was in the Bahamas, Bermudas, always, you know, with dudes with nice cars and stuff like that. And in the end, she was calling the, you know, when she was in her 70s, she was calling the, the, the uh cable guy so that she could argue with him so she had some kind of social contact contact with other people because she had no friends she had she had chased the very last guy she had a boyfriend probably when she was in 70s she had a boyfriend and she was just nasty and disrespectful and ran him away and then literally just died in a home by herself she didn't even have a cat so it's a there's a situation where not only that, but men, older men become a commodity as they get older because there's so much more women, there's lonely women. And then all of a sudden they're willing to settle for a guy who has night vision, who can drive after after five o'clock to after sundown. Because, and then you, because now now you, you're slim pickings. It's like last call at a bar, the bar yeah. of life is last call. Last call. And I, Doug, I know for a fact my sister died lonely and alone mm. because she was and she was just nasty, just horrible to people, just an awful, awful human being and took advantage of people constantly. And uh, and that's my blood. So it's mm. an interesting thing how the tables turn. But when you understand the dynamics of the facts and you have them, you, you know, knowledge is always is always king. You know, when you understand that, it's it, and you could just sit be, and you're aware of it. Yo, once you're 40, so the guys, the upper level dudes are trying to get younger girls. Yeah. Well, you, it's it, it's an ego, it's an ego thing. Yeah. It's an ego thing. And the thing is, in the front end, women have the supply and demand advantage. They right. do. When you're young, you have all the you're number hot of people. And, and we're young and we're immature. So it's even yeah. better. And so, but also they don't have that appreciation because they haven't experienced life. So you're throwing away perfectly good men because you don't appreciate what they bring to the table. You don't appreciate good guys. The good, good guys, guys yeah. that'll that'll stand up for you and be there yeah. for you. Because you have those options, you can do what happens is as you get older, those options kind of less and let go, especially if you have kids. They diminish. Yeah. They diminish, you know. And yeah, we talk about Kevin Samuels, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> uh, no name above that name. Uh, Kevin Samuels, you know, he talked about it all the time. And these clips are still blowing up after he's dead because they're still relevant. And this notion of like, your value goes down if you have kids and you're, you know, you get the older you get, the the more your value goes down. That's just the nature of the beast. And yeah. you still have this expectation of what you expect. The expectations don't go down from women as they get older. They still have that same mentality that they had when they were in their 20s yeah. and they could get whatever they want. The supply goes away. So now all of a sudden that doesn't exist anymore. But it's the ego that you're not thinking about the future. You're not, I mean, it's around you. You don't even bother to look. Yeah. yeah. Because let's be honest, it's around you. You ever see do you, your you mama think? lonely? Yeah. Look at your mama. Your mama's lonely. She a lot of motherfuckers out. You oh, she left my dad, but blah 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 blah. Yeah, but uh, where, does she have a boyfriend? No, she had a boyfriend five years ago. Yo, those opportunities diminish. And they diminish, and then you have to settle for less. And so you got to, but this is, this is a lot that has to do with 
you know, as much as I'm directing this at women and they're not having this accountability, it's men's fault too. Men are hugely responsible for because this. Because we tolerate this behavior. If a girl is hot, a guy will pull it up with anything until he won't put up with it. Let me tell you who my hero is. And he passed away and we should do a remembrance of the great Iron Sheik. And I'll tell you a story <laughs> and you take the story and you keep the story with you. The Iron Sheik was in a car with Greg the Hammer Valentine and they were driving down the road and the fabulous Mula was in the back. And the Iron Sheik, as he's known to do, starts smoking some marijuana in the car. My marijuana. He's, I smoke my marijuana. And <laughs> then the fabulous Mula starts complaining, Sheik, I don't like that shit. And so the Iron Sheik goes, oh, you don't like I smoked the marijuana? Greg, stop the car. Get the fuck out the car right now. <laughs> if you don't like my marijuana. <laughs> and that's the mentality we all need to have like the great iron sheik sure was that an excuse to tell that story for almost no reason maybe <laughs> maybe but take but... that message with you when in doubt be like the iron <laughs> sheik and be willing to get the fuck out my car you better throw whenever you get a chance to throw the fabulous moolah out throw the fabulous moolah out that's important, got a free dude. ride in the car you're complaining but my point is that, that in a serious note is that yeah you're right dante it is men's fault because men perpetuate this behavior because you do reward just the hotness. Just look at Zion yeah. Williamson that he got. He's got two women that were being rewarded just for being hot. They brought nothing else to the table. Well, to my Mariah Mills. I, I'm, and let me go ahead. Keep talking. I'm gonna yeah, look they brought more. nothing. They, the odds are they brought nothing to the table. Well, they definitely the, brought nothing to the stage. Uh, yeah. You know, they, I mean, one's a stripper. One's an adult film star. More than likely, that, and they're going after an NBA player. It's a story we've seen a hundred times, a thousand times. They're bringing nothing to the table. They're just hot. And that's what, but that's, they get rewarded for it. That's a career. Yeah. Both of these women have made a career off just being hot, just leeching off of this guy who is a professional basketball player with skills. They are on, to a degree, this woman who's having his baby is going to get at least a third of his money. Yeah. Without a doubt, maybe yeah. more half in a divorce. He, I mean, I guess they're not married. So, that you know, I mean, child, I mean, child custody, uh, ch you know, what do you call it uh, every month when you pay the for the alimo not alimony? Alimony. No, 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 it's not child alimony. Support. Is married. Child, child support. support. Sorry, I'm forgetting my words. This is this is a woman who is now going to her hotness has been rewarded. And guess right. what? There's a bunch lined up to I mean, literally, probably to fuck Zion Williamson. Right. Right. It's not like he's off limits. There's just another no. one going, well, listen, I know that this I know that this uh, this machine pays out. I know yeah. that the, if I pull the handle on this, I could end up with a couple hundred million dollars if I get a baby off of him, at least 10 million dollars. So he's rewarding that. Oh, and what do they do? They're just hot. That's it. It goes to the yeah. old. How do you get into the, the 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 VIP room, the VIP box at the arena? Yeah. How do you, you either have to own a girl. You either have to have been a former player, a Hall of Famer, or just some hot chick. Right. That's it. Right. More, all right. She's 31 years old. So, Doug, she's already on the downswing. You know what I'm saying? She's already tapping out. Plus the fact that you have extensive video. Uh, and I mean extensive video. She has a video catalog. It do be extensive. It is it an is, extensive catalog. It is an extensive catalog, Doug. It is crazy. And and this is so you have a that's child. The new, that's what I want to put into it. Next time I go to Pornhub, by the way, I just want to put the word extensive in and see what pops up. Extensive. Into Pornhub. Ca extensive catalog. So that, that deep dicking was extensive. Oh, yeah. She she I mean, and they, so now even as a kid, even as a son or a daughter that has her as a mother has to look at, you know, now she has to live. They have to live with the fact that her mom took dicks in the face. For a living on the on excessively, you know, she she didn't even do it because she need she needed bread. Like she did this, she was single and ready to mingle, and she just decided I'm gonna take dicks to the face. What's crazy is even that um, remember I, I had a, I was supposed to do an interview with um Lisa Ann, and what a fucking cunt! I mean, like she just like we I was late or I had some technical. And I apologize, and my apology wasn't enough. And and it, what happens is, if you, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's so much you swallow so much sperm that you you, you it makes you masculine. But she wouldn't accept my apology, and and I'm like, bitch, you you take dicks in the face. 
I don't have to respect you. I'm respecting you because you're a human being. And anybody that tells you this whole idea of the fact that you uh, you can't slut shame or you can't look, you do what you want to do. I don't have to like it and I don't have to like you for what you do. And I could value the way that you want to. I mean, we do it. We do it when it comes to, to, to nationality and color. I get to choose what I what my differentiate, what what my what my um preference is. And if I don't want to be, if I don't want to give birth, have a child with somebody who who's, takes dicks in the face, I get to do that because of whatever psychological shit that I don't want my my son or my daughter to deal with. That's it's not what you want. If that's not what I want. want. Just like you don't have to deal with a fat guy or you don't have to deal with a short guy. You get to choose. So do we. And if you're offended by it, then be offended by it. But shut the fuck up because you're not going to give your you're not going to give up your standard because of it. It's and just it, go yeah. ahead. and no, it does go back to like you said, going back to it's it's guy's fault. It really is because we do tolerate just bringing nothing to the table. Nonsensical conversation. How many dates have gone on? where you're like, this woman is boring. She is uninteresting. She is, I have no connection or whatsoever, but I'm hoping to get laid. So I'm going to keep doing this. And that's just, you're, you're a liar. Yeah. You're lying yeah. and your lies, you know, it's, it's ruining society because you're not willing to walk away because you're afraid that you can't do better. But the amazing part is when you walk away, you start to do better. When you have standards, you start to do better. When yeah. you say no, you start to do better. Yes. Something in the universe just it it affects it in a you know you just become your standards get higher and you're actually more respected by women even in the small things it doesn't have to be an adult yeah. film star you don't have to just it doesn't have to be something that drastic but hey if you're late and you're rude I'm out cool yeah I'm not dealing with that yeah it's unnecessary if you have a nasty attitude for you know, if you're not justified in that I'm out. I'm yeah, out. it's just it's it's just really at some point in time it gets absurd, you know what we're talking about in in a real sense of how, uh, you know, and you constantly have people that are even men who support this shit. I'm trying to get this thing for you, Harry. I'm I'm gonna share it to you. Uh, shit. Hold on. Uh, this is a clip. I'm I'm gonna put it in the talk. In the chat, but it's like, uh, hold on, let me put it in. Uh, Let me close down that porn window because we are looking up uh, uh, Mariah Mills. Can't have that on the YouTube here. Hold on, let me find the chat. Chat, there we go. Yeah. All right, what is this now? Oh, this is a TikTok. Yeah. Uh, The uh, but it's interesting if you don't if you don't uh. You know what I'm saying? If you don't create a standard, then why would anybody respect you? You know, if you if you're just going to if you allow people to treat you like trash, then they will treat you like trash. It takes if you can find a woman where you're a pushover, but she's still kind to you. Snatch her up. I don't care if she got one eye in the middle of her forehead, because that's such a rare thing for somebody to have the respect for people when when they don't demand that respect and you have to understand that part of your manhood is to set to figure out what your standards are and how you and how you want to live your life and it's okay if that if a woman decides not to live because here's the thing i think sometimes guys think it's better to have anything and be miserable than to have nothing you're wrong you're better off with nothing but the bottom line is when you really Stand up for yourself and you say what you're also the subtext of that is I have value and I'm aware of having that value and I'm not going to let you just buy me at a discount or do whatever you want to do or say whatever you want to say because you want to say it. We're just not doing that. Can you get that? Yeah, I get it. I'm trying to put up the setting to make sure that the sound plays because sometimes. uh yeah place video next to shared screen give me a second here while i'm trying to make sure that when we play it we can actually hear it because on zoom sometimes you can't you can share the screen but you can't hear it so let's try it let's give it a try Mm -hmm. and uh share the screen uh let's see here bear with me google yeah from share sound there we go all right 
And I think you see it there. Yeah, I see it. A damn job. See, these dudes kill me. That's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. What else she need to slide up to the table with? What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. See, these dudes kill me. That's mm. what's wrong with this. See, these okay. dudes kill me. All right. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, this and that's, is, go ahead. That's why you've been married, what, three, four times? Four times you're taking care. Lucky thing you're rich because he's yeah. taking care of all three different families. Which is fine if that's what you want to do. But, dog, you're a clown. Like, stop that. Like, at, at what point in time in history do, do people not contribute to each other? And like I say, we say this all the time. I understand Me Too feminism and the fact that men were going crazy. But that it's, uh, you, you know, so when, what do we do now? What are we going to do now? Now you're going you're gonna to put, you're going to be just gold diggers and have children. I want a baby by him. And let me, let me keep moving. I got a baby by him and I'm going to just keep moving and he have to pay for it. And I could do whatever I want to do. I mean, shit, I'm what, living what is, it myself. Yeah. What is that mentality that he had? I don't understand what he's trying to say. Like guys are, idiots I don't, for... he's a fucking idiot. He's an yeah. out of touch idiot. He's an out of touch idiot who is dealing with things on some old school shit that where you're dealing with women that when women women were different a different brand of people as well and to be honest he's a simp like the just the fact that, that you what what's interesting is how rich he is because he keeps telling women what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear you are on a clock you have to be more than just your fucking eyelashes and the, and your BBL. If you are, if you're gonna fuck everybody, everybody, there's a lot of dudes who are just not gonna be okay with that. And you can't go. The culture is fucked up. You got to deal with what is. That's the difference with men. If if you got a fat motherfucker and he's dating somebody, he's either gonna be real cheap, gonna learn how to be real charming, or he's gonna hit the gym. Or he's going to do something. He's going to do something to compensate for what he's missing. If he's unattractive, he's going to be charming and he's going to be in shape. The, this thing of the fact that you have to take me out, I don't have to do anything. This is a choice. So and it's really our fault because we are tolerating this nonsense because nobody wants to lose an opportunity to put their dick in something. And ultimately, you put your dick in something, you end up then because you, you know, maybe you do like Zion. Now you got a bunch of you got a bunch of ratchet hoes it's all around. You got a baby with a ratchet hoe. And now your life is going to be miserable for the rest. Not only that, but your life is going to be miserable. But if she's not a good mother, then your child suffers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it's just going to be I mean, look, the odds are that kid is going to be your mother's a stripper and your father is a guy who was banging a stripper and an adult yeah. film star. Statistically, the odds aren't great for the kid. Yeah. Just, just, it just ain't, it just, it, it ain't going to be great. None of the, none of the three people involved are capable of really mentally. Hey, he's a young kid. Who's, who's chasing his balls. You know what I'm saying? His balls are directing his actions. You having a kid. Yeah, he got money. So what? None of that matters anything. Just, I mean, look, look at Hunter Biden's son is on crack with hookers. And Joe Biden's son, Hunter. Joe yeah. Biden, yeah, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden. I mean, you know what? What more white privilege could that dude have? Sure. Yeah. That that he's smoking crack with hookers, and I get it. We all have our burden and whatever. But come on, man, let's grow up. Let's um. But yeah, that was dope uh, talking about that. I mean, we have to take responsibility for what we allow. And if we allow it, man, and it continues on and women continue to be that way, it's because we're going, it's okay. Harry, kick your shit, man. Tell me where you're going to be at, what's going on. All of my stuff is on my social media. You could go to uh, at Harry Turjanian uh, on YouTube, uh, uh, TikTok, Instagram. That's where I'm 
putting all my stuff on. And if you want relationship consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can set up a consultation for you to fix your life, fix your relationships, whatever needs fixing. We'll do it. Yo, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. All my stuff. Uh, follow me on uh, on uh, YouTube. I'm putting more stuff up there. Don't forget the Patreon. Consultations. DanteNimber.com. Click on consult. GYBB. Get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? We out, yo. Hey, and join us over at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Uh, we're doing a bonus show right after this. We're getting you more stuff. And also the original Man School episodes and Beige Phillip episodes all the way from episode one. We're starting to post them on Patreon.com. That's where you can find them. I know you've been asking for it. So Patreon.com slash Manschool202. It helps us keep the show running. Uh, thank you for your support. <laughs>